Okay, um, thank you so much. I'm Kafid. Uh, I'm actually from, from Benin and I'm happy to, to present this work um, that is part of the uh, GOSH uh, Research and Policy Workshop Program. Uh, we got uh, the funding for it uh, last year and it's uh, ongoing work uh, regarding open uh, science hardware practice and potentialities for, for Africa. So it's basically a systematic review that we are doing uh, to give us to, to give us more insight um, about um, the practices, but also um, to be able to infer in the potentiality that open science uh, hardware could have uh, in the Africa continent. Actually, so we'll be discussing four major points, which is uh, a briefly an introduction about the, the context in Africa. Um, talk a little bit about the the review process we undertake and. Uh, um, the third part will be about having like an overview of the, the measure uh, study that we find out in the literature uh, regarding the subject. And then uh, we'll finish with uh, the analysis regarding the study and some of the remarks that we, we actually have. So yeah, um, the Africa continent uh, is one of the, I mean, places across the world that has a lot of challenge to meet. Uh, regarding um, access to education, agriculture, um, clean water, and so on, um, uh, compared to other places uh, in the planet. But in the same time, there is this growing population. That is a fact, and uh, we need like a kind of acceleration regarding the the way uh, Africa finds solution for uh, to solve all of those uh, problems that. Actually, uh, some researchers just uh, qualify as complex and wicked problem because you don't know exactly what, what is like the, the, the solution to solve some of the challenges. So it's important to keep working to find out uh, innovative solution actually. But also in the literature, we find out that some researchers are a bit uh, skeptical about um, the fact that Africa could meet the sustainable development goal. And I think this is not only about Africa, it's about all the places. Uh, but moreover, uh, Africa has, uh, is a bit uh, much more skeptical to, to meet all of those goals. But how can we make sure to meet the goal if it is not about innovation? Uh, the other fact uh, is that you may heard throughout news that um, most of the country in the continent are having a fast growing uh, you know, economical uh, development uh, or, or the, the, the GDP growth and so on. But a study show that actually the economical growth only is not what bring a sustainable change, but uh, potentially the technological growth is what will bring the sustainability uh, in terms of development in a country. So, but to achieve and have a technological growth, it's important to be able to, to have a, a science uh, that is working properly uh, with, uh, I mean, the good material that make it uh, provide the space and the means to researchers to be able to come out with uh, the, the proper technology that we need to solve our main issue. What, what motivates us basically to dive into this work is that Open Science Hardware Movement is a global one, uh, including Africa. Um, it's like an emerging uh, movement in Africa, basically. Uh, but we find out that uh, we have, I mean, few people, we don't have a lot of people uh, coming from uh, Africa joining those committees, although Africa may have a huge uh, advantage of getting into uh, this movement to be able to uh, keep innovative and so on. So that's why we think of um, this um, strategy of spending more time thinking of, I mean, a framework and way that we could, pro I mean, promote much more open science hardware throughout the continent. So um, some, uh, some studies just show the fact that community like uh, open science hardware communities actually do uh, raise the, um, the social capital actually that drive innovation. So uh, uh, let's say the, to put the, the question very simple is like, how do we uh, evolve those movements to reinforce the social capital to drove uh, to, to drive actually more innovation uh, in in the continent so to, for the systematic review um, 
we try to use some of the process we use basic in education science, uh, which is basically social science to conduct this systematic review, but using uh, much more some digital tool uh, based on AI and like Sotero, which is an open source uh, tool, uh, Covidence, which is not uh, open source, but Elicit as well, which is an AI free tool that help now to be able to find out uh, papers uh, use uh, very faster uh, and more efficiently. So we basically focus on open science hardware in Africa. Uh, I mean, paper that tackle open science hardware in Africa and also developing world because we don't have a lot of, I mean, articles that are really focusing on the topic. But moreover, we also look at a paper that talk about broadly open science uh, policy in Africa. Uh, with uh, the implication for open hardware as well. So going through the, the I mean, a screening and selection of the studies and uh, also um, for the search, we use like two uh, way of doing it. First of all, trying to go through the search engine database to find, um, I mean, manually some papers and then use the AI base uh, to make sure that we uh, are finding uh, the most, uh, available possible paper uh, that are tackling the subject. So first of all, we uh, doing this using French and, I mean, French and English. Uh, we've collected some uh, over 200 papers, first of all, but after uh, just going through, um, I mean, the, the selection uh, process and looking uh, deeply into them, we uh, find out uh, after the uh, the first um, the duplicate and, and so on we we have like 139 now going through all of them uh, and also checking the the full test we finally um, selected 19 uh, paper uh, that really talk about open science hardware uh, in africa so those papers um, are coming from, I mean, uh, attacking different uh, parts of the, 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 the subject, uh, where some of them just remind us about the fact that open science hardware is important, not uh, only for science, but also to solve some of the major issues that people are facing currently in Africa. So, um, and also the, the, the strategy to facilitate the hardware availability for researchers uh, is really, really uh, important to, to, to facilitate the transfer of knowledge from, uh, let's say, the, 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 the north to the south uh, side of the world. But uh, it, whether it is in Africa, um, South America, open science hardware at all uh, are becoming very, very important to solve some major issue in health, uh, assets, water, and, and so on. So can I, some of them also find out the connection between open science initiative and community development. So those tools, some tools are the, when we develop them actually, they bring a change within some community regarding education, uh, regarding solving some health issue uh, and so on. And we found out some use cases in uh, Nigeria, but also in uh, East Africa where people use like the uh, human centering approach uh, to improve um, the way students, they, they work uh, in group to be able to find out tools that they need uh, actually to learn more science because uh, you may find some places where uh, students don't have, I mean, Microsoft, for instance, to be able to uh, use it for to, to work out uh, in science and technology learning. So we also have like the paper that, you know, uh, put the use case of uh, the gathering for open science hardware, which is uh, one of the movement that is trying to uh, drive the uh, open science uh, movement uh, in Africa, actually. So um, research, research are relatively new. And uh, we, if we look at Africa, America, uh, uh, Latin America, uh, but, and some places in Asia, and young scientists actually need to actually work out and build uh, open science practice from the, the ground up, because uh, in those places, actually, is very, very new. Um, we find out some papers really putting out some of the major challenges regarding the why open science hardware is not going in Africa, which is about sometimes the language barrier, but also the structure of the research organization, actually. So um, I'm going to dive now to the analysis part. Uh, from the 19 paper that we find, all of them are actually in English. The French one that we find, uh, we're focusing much more about open uh, scholarship, not uh, open hardware. 
And they study, um, most of them are very recent, uh, starting from uh, 2014 uh, to come in now. And you could see throughout uh, the graph here that the number of publications that are targeting, I mean, the, the Soviet are growing. And you could see that between uh, 2020 and 2023, we have a, a jump uh, that is basically, we, we could see the jump here that. So it's like the, uh, the topic is becoming much more, um, I mean, growing and important in the literature. So we try to make a kind of semantic analysis and we find out that there is two major clusters. The first one, which is about uh, Africa and open science. And the second one, which is about like researcher um, and the, the, the different countries actually. So uh, doing a quick sentiment analysis um, in the, I mean, using the abstract and the, the paper title, we find out that um, there is a, a positive sentiment that which is um, uh, uh, with the confidence of uh, uh, night, um, 57.3%. Uh, so it's not like it's too bad the situation about open science hardware, but it's like there is hope actually because we are a bit um, above 90% uh, actually. So looking at the geographical spread, why we were collecting the, the paper, if we wanted to focus only on the paper that only talk about Africa, we won't be having a lot as you could see here. Only 36% uh, of them are really only like specifically focusing in Africa. <laughs> but we, we added some uh, the paper that are uh, also talking about developing country, which is, uh, I mean, something like more generally speaking. So looking at some, some metric, we could find out that overall it's only 52% uh, uh, of the paper that only focus on policy uh, issue. And we don't have more experimental uh, study. I mean, looking at the way we could introduce uh, open science move, uh, hardware movement into a population and see the change that is happened, like using RCTs. And we think this is maybe a potential way where some of the study coming could focus. And plus, we don't have a lot of empirical study uh, on the subject. Most of the paper are, are about like uh, use cases and, and so on. And talking to the potential, also we have few people that are really focusing to look at what could be the potential of open science hardware in the continent actually. So most of them are about the practice and also uh, how uh, those innovations are coming up. Yeah. So look, doing a qualitative analysis, we find out that there is five major cluster of paper. The, the first one where we have more paper is where you have open science hardware for uh, local solution and innovation um, and in education, uh, for instance, you know, for you know, yeah, innovation and ed education. So paper are describing how uh, open science hardware is used um, much more uh, in the innovation field and education. Uh, some of them are talking about the way the movement could be good to develop a research and development and also uh, strengthen the networking of African researchers. Uh, after that, we have those talking much more about the open science hardware for uh, knowledge transfer and uh, um, those uh, tackling national the challenge and strategy uh, that uh, not only Africa, but also some other places can undertake to improve, uh, I mean, the movement in, in the places to have more impact in the, in the, uh, in the society. Um, but the last thing here, the, we could find a paper uh, regarding open science hardware for common good and science development are very few. Uh, within, uh, the, I, we have like few paper uh, within this cluster. <laughs> so the last uh, thing we try out is actually based on the paper that we select here to be able to infer in what could be the potential of um, uh, open science hardware in the continent. So we use a tool um, called OSDG, um, which is a, an AI-based tool that helps to assess um, what are the sustainable development goals that you know um, papers are tackling. So putting all the abstract and the title together and then passing through uh, this tool uh, just um, give us this result where we could find out that this is like the four major sustainable development goal where uh, open science hardware um, is could have like a, a huge potential based on this analysis. The first one is uh, industry, innovation and infrastructure. The second one is about good health uh, and well-being. 
Uh, the third one is about peace, justice, and strong institution. And then the fourth one is about the quality um, uh, in education. So this is basically um, what we, we have done um, so far, um, working on the, this uh, systematic review. And from this result, we could uh, definitely see uh, some of the, I mean, the major um, industry or area where um, our action uh, for open science hardware could be much more focusing. But also we could find out one of the major gap regarding the way um, we could conduct more research to find out policy, but also strategy that will help us to improve the, I mean, the, the, the wave and the intensity of the open science hardware movement in the continent to get more people in, but also to be able to develop much more projects to solve the uh, society, um, I mean, uh, problem actually. So um, yeah, that's basically what we worked on. Um, this is um, the the first presentation of this work. Uh, we will be happy sharing the the link in our forum and get feedback from people to be able to improve it. And also the the next step will be we working with a group of people from. Open Science um, hardware, I mean, practitioners uh, and innovators from Africa to think together about program that we could uh, implement uh, to be able to improve the, the movement actually uh, in the content. So, yeah. Um, thank you. I don't know if you have some question. Um, 